Well, good morning, Kicksters. Welcome to The Morning Kick. This morning, we're taking a little bit of a detour. Over the time that we've been doing The Morning Kick, we've been giving resources for business, trying to bring some inspiration into your day, trying to help you navigate through all of the, the chaos and sometimes the changes that have constantly been coming our way. Well, doesn't it feel good that we seem to be getting some direction? Australia and New Zealand doing well as far as their COVID cases are concerned. So let's start looking to the future. And one of the exciting things that uh, we see at Excite Media is the work that we've been able to do working with a charity called the Fig Tree Children. And I'm going to be introducing you to the founder, Jane Shakespeare. Welcome to The Morning Kick. How are you this morning? <laughs> yeah, I'm great, Andrew. Thank you for inviting me. I, I'm loving these shows that you're doing and I'm really honoured to be here. So, you know, I'm, I, there's a lot of been really interesting people. Um, I'll tell you a couple of people that I've been watching. So I've been watching your videos and I think they're awesome. And uh, Stephen, the copywriting guy, I forget the name of his company, but um, I particularly related to that because Writing is not my forte, and I really struggle with it. So, um, and Grace as well, the lady that works with influencers. Um, oh, you've got two great lady. ones there. Yeah, yes, yeah. Grace absolutely. Newman with um, her influencer agency, and, and Stephen mm. from Taylorist Agency. So, you're right. And listen, go to our YouTube channel. You can check out and watch the repeats. And so, a big hello to all the people that are watching uh, the morning kick on repeat, whether it's on YouTube or we're on the Facebook channel. But we've been working with Jane Shakespeare and her company, Shakespeare Creative, has been going for a number of years. But part of the magic has been getting to know Jane's heart for the people of Sierra Leone. And so we wanted to tell you all about the Fig Tree Children. Now, we're going to take you to the website very shortly, show you the Instagram page and really connect you in to the work that's happening. But Jane, for you, it was pretty personal and it started a number of years ago. Can you tell us how you connected to Sierra Leone? Sure. Well, it started, um, uh, I, I guess, if I go back to when I was uh, in a previous life, I was a financial advisor, believe it or not. <laughs> it's completely opposite ends of the of what I'm doing now. So, um, And that took me to do a development economics degree. Um, and uh, I was a financial advisor for 13 years, and I studied development economics. And it was a research project that I did with women's groups and microcredit screens, um, schemes in Sierra Leone that took me there in two, February 2006. Um, wow. Yeah. A so, few years back. Uh, were you going to Sierra Leone with trepidation? How did it feel going to kind of an African nation and some um, a, a location that was really needing development? Oh, it was uh, it was my, li literally life changing. I mean, there were, I was especially shocked while I was there at the plight of the young children. Okay, and I saw you know many of them that weren't going to school and they had to work. Um, in many cases, they were breaking rocks, and um, you know some were. You know, the thing that really hit me were the barefooted children that were walking around in or rummaging around in in dirty landfill. You know, that was filled with sanitary pads and waste and excrement and all sorts of and pigs there were pigs there you know and these children are wading around in this landfill and um, looking for something they can buy to eat or to actually um maybe sell buy find something that they could sell for a few cents so they can buy something to eat you know and uh, and playing they're playing in there you know so that really shocked me i think that was the one thing that really stuck with me um, and, you know, I realized that there was an urgent need for those children to be in school and need some financial support. Um, so I, I guess I came away from there vowing that I'd do something to help. And it's taken, it took me until 2015 to get the charity up and running. It's not something you can do overnight. You know, it's uh, Sierra Leone is actually considered one of the more corrupt countries in the world. So it's not an easy place to work. It's not, it's not a place you would just set something up without knowing what you're doing. And um, so it took me a few years to build relationships and trust and uh, be able to, to know that I could work with people that I really wanted to. I, I mean, one particular person, Reverend Father Peter Conte, he was my main contact. It was him I met when I was there in 2006. And I've kind of followed him and and he, he even came and stayed at our house in England um, at one time he came over to the UK and came and stayed with us and so he knows us very well as a family 
and um, he's a very, very warm, uh, inspirational guy that very selfless, does a lot of things, a lot of good things for um, orphan children in Sierra Leone. And at the time I was there, he was managing and running a children's home in Bow. And uh, I visited that and met the children. And in fact, some of the children that were in that home are friends of mine today. And they're now, you know, young adults that are trying to find their way as well. With Father Peter's support, he still supports these kids. So they're the lucky ones. Those children in the children's home were the lucky ones. It was the children living on the streets that weren't so lucky. And I wanted to try and find a way with him that I could, I could help them. So... That's where That's the Victory children started. Mm. When when I kind of imagine what that was like and looking through your eyes, I don't know if you noticed, but it really got me quite serious, just, just realising the implications as a dad and knowing that I wouldn't want my kids to grow up in that kind of environment. Mm. So where did you see the hope? Um, did you see it through the father's oh. eyes? Was it some kind of um, glimmer that you saw another organisation doing something well? Where did you start to get a, or hatch a plan for the fig tree children? Um, I guess I saw that I th I read a lot about uh, education, children being educated as well. And I, I guess I, I saw that if these kids could at least go to school and make sure they can stay in school and support. Uh, another big problem over there is young girls that get married off early, you know, before they even finish school. So girls finishing school is very low um, and you know we've already in the fig tree program we actually lost a girl that got she actually got raped and she ended up her rapist came back and he married her and and the life with him he was a banker in the city and the life with him was better than the life she got so she chose to take that option, even though we offered to support her and her child, we offered to try and get the baby sponsored as well. She decided to take that option. We couldn't do anything about it. Our hands were tied. I'm not an expert. I don't know. You know, I, I wanted to help her and, uh, and we couldn't. So being able to support other girls in the fig tree program, especially, and making sure that they don't end up... Um, you know, getting getting married off or getting pregnant. By, and, and education mm. is the only way that that's going to make a difference to their life. So they need to be staying in school. They need to be working with their peers. And this is a huge issue now because of COVID-19. The kids aren't in school. You know, I'm worried. I'm worried for these girls. I'm really worried. for. I'm worried for the, the all of the children, but the girls in particular, I think, are at higher risk. Um, yeah, it's a lot of balancing priorities, isn't there? Everything mm. from food, education and health. And and uh, you've had um, a program trying to assist with sanitary pads and, and some of those essentials of life. Mm. Um, how do you actually get the resources through? What's the, the model? Mm. Like I know that Excite Media and some of the staff have been voluntary, vol voluntarily, there's a big word for the morning, <laughs> helping get some funding to you. But what happens to the funding from there? What happens with the funding? or how yeah, to get to, the to funding get, to get extra funding well, first of yeah. all what yeah. happens to the funding once you receive it okay okay so um we've got the sponsorship program um so for that for 48 dollars a month someone can sponsor a child we actually take the risk and pay for that child's school fees up front for the year and um that that money then goes towards um also we buy school materials uh, we it goes into providing other things like um mattresses mosquito nets in fact it's not enough to cover these things i have to do other things to get extra funds for that but the actual sponsorship money itself pays an allowance to the child's carer every month so we actually physically give them cash and right. It's proven that if you give small amounts of, if you give money to people in the third world, it actually has a massive impact rather than, um, yeah, or buying food for them, those sort of things. They ha it has a massive impact. So we're very much about that. And, you know, in some cases, we've got carers that, are, that use that money in order to buy goods that they then sell on. You know, they've got like a little store that they run. 
And that makes a big difference as well. So there's like these little social enterprise groups that pop up because of it. Um, so yeah, the yeah. micro business is good for building responsibility, mm. helping people be self sufficient, and not just always looking for a handout. I I totally yeah. agree with that as as a yeah. model. Yeah. Jane, um, when it comes to actually fundraising here in Australia, uh, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on the show is that things have been tough here in Australia. We know that. But if you can build a sense of um, giving out of your business, then you're going to have a focus on growing your business in order that you can look after your staff, look after your business, look after your customers, but you can also look after somebody else as well. And I'd like to encourage business owners who are watching today to consider maybe they can make a small contribution to an organization like the Fig Tree Children. How do you gather funds? I've, I've been to fundraising cinema events, but what else do you do to actually get the funds in here in Australia? Um, yeah, our events are one thing. So because of COVID-19, we had a, a sellout event that was going to take place in April. Um, we, uh, we, we organized, in fact, Niall Urquhart from Urban Landscaping took that on. And that was his project, uh, which was great. Another local business supporting us, you know, it was wonderful. And he organized a long lunch and it sold out. Um, it, within a week, it sold out. So I had to then, I had the task then of giving everybody their money back. So it was over $4,000 I had to give back to people, which really irked me, but um, it was the only way. And I did it straight away. We canceled the event and it'll happen. You know, at some point in the future, we will redo that event. So it was two local restaurants in Kenmore that got together. They're both next door to one another. And we were going to have a long table and have a long lunch. Right. And uh, yeah, that was that was the aim for that. It was a great menu. It was awesome. You would have loved it. <laughs> so maybe the next you know one when we, when we put it <laughs> when we put when we put when we put them put it out again. You know, hopefully I can go back to those people and they want to buy the tickets. And yeah, so that that will be good. But yeah, so with regards to so that you know fundraising events, yeah, movie nights again. We can't organize movie nights at the moment. Um, so because of that, I've been running campaigns. Um, it's my only way. I'm at home. I'm stuck at home. Um, you know, I'm, so I've been setting up campaigns and trying to reach out to people for to help us with things like we've we've bought. Um, a, do you know what a Veronica bucket is? Um, it does ring a bell, but no, I don't know what it <laughs> no. is exactly. Okay, yeah. so in Sierra Leone, um, because there's no running water in people's homes, they have these buckets that have got a tap on the bottom, plastic. Uh, plastic tap and a, and a lid on so they go to the, the well and they fill their with Veronica bucket so a lot of our kids didn't have those so we bought all of them though so I ran a campaign for that for, for buckets and soap because it's the next best thing to having a running a tap in your home so we, we got them those and um, and I've also I've got an ongoing campaign at the moment for food parcels because um, you know, we've provided them all with food parcels. I managed to raise enough to um, get the food parcels that we needed for all of our children. But by having the, the by us giving our household a food parcel, it helps the community because they all cook together, and um, you know, it feeds more than just the household. So, being able to buy things like um you know onions and gary which is like a stock and tomatoes and uh rice and um things that they can use to cook with even tea and powdered milk so they can have a cup of tea you know it's uh, just those sort of things uh, sugar uh, you know flour they're all really valuable things that cost a lot of money to these people for them to go to the markets and because of covid19 again all the food prices have been hiked because they're not able to get the food. So, um, you know, by us buying in bulk, we can get it a little bit cheaper. And Aminata is just amazing. I've got this wonderful program manager and she just packages everything up and she gets it distributed. She Let's um, show people how they can actually connect with some of these ideas. Because if you go to the Fig Tree Children website at the moment, which is on the screen, figtreechildren.org, uh, then you'll notice there's a coming soon page because there has been a website up, but Jane, excited that you're only about seven days away from launching the new website. <laughs> I'm so being we, ambitious. We, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but we'd love you to go along to the website and put your name in, um, get notified by Jane when it's going live. When we know that it's live on the morning kick, we'll make sure that everybody knows as well. But there you go. Go to victorychildren.org. But also right now, you can go to their Facebook page, facebook.com slash the fig tree children. And you'll notice that the pinned post at the top actually has link to this page here where you can actually click through and make donations to door towards food parcels, radios, sanitary pads, get the newsletter, and an, even an interview with some guy called Andrew from Excite Media. There you go. This <laughs> all happening. So do go along to the Fig Tree Children on Facebook and the website. And I saw you got an Instagram page up and running. So you're definitely all the mod social media happening. So you want people following you there as well, Jane? Oh, absolutely. I vote, Instagram's new to me. So this is my new thing and i'm loving it i prefer it to facebook and i'm trying to reach out to another audience because i think i've um i think my facebook friends are donored out you know they've had enough of me <laughs> that's what i feel i feel it and somebody said to me jane maybe you need to separate your your personal thing from from the facebook page so i need to perhaps focus more on fig tree children facebook page rather than my own personal and i have actually taken facebook off my phone because i find it too distracting with everything going on in the world i'm a little bit irked by a few things that i get passionate about and the whole all lives all black lives matter campaign and everything i'm obviously very passionate about that so um you know it's uh, yeah it's interesting times and you have you to be careful what battles you news. pick. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And and sometimes it can be overwhelming. So a timeout isn't a bad idea on social. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you in terms of the fig tree children, can you tell us what's happening for the children at the moment? Um, have you had news in? Um, how are they handling things with no school? Uh, are there some good things and some things we can be concerned about that you maybe can tell us up to date? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so schools have closed in Sierra Leone. Um, it wasn't that long ago that they went through the Ebola virus. So these people are experts at viruses. <laughs> you know, they know what they're doing and they they know to they know they should socially distance. They know they should wash their hands, all of these things, because they've already been there. And um so with the schools being closed, they're not learning at the moment. And uh, they they missed a lot of schooling because of Ebola. And and now that the schools have closed, we're we're looking at ways that we can maybe help them with their learning. So in Sierra Leone, the government have actually introduced an on-air learning camp, uh, learning thing. So you can, uh, you know, if you've got a radio, you can listen to classes online. And I think it's benefiting a lot of the children doing that. Um, and there's also another organization that I've partnered with called um, uh, Rising Networks. And and they've given us access to all their learning material and given us their radio channels and everything. So we're we're sharing that with all of our children. The problem we've got is that not all of our kids have got radios. <laughs> so 49... We're talking internet here. We're talking getting a radio. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Our kids, these kids don't have uh, PCs and Zoom and, you know, everything that our kids are sitting at home doing. So... Um, you know, we they they they're learning by radio, and but forty nine out of seventy six of our children don't have a radio. So I'm I'm running a campaign for that, and I'm starting to get a little bit of a momentum to try and buy radio. So for thirty eight dollars, we can get them a good solar powered battery radio, which you know when the sun's shining, the solar's going to work. But they get a lot. They at the moment they're starting to go into the rainy season. So solar isn't particularly good through that time. So it needs to have a battery um, element as well. So, so, uh, so yeah, we're we're looking to buy radio. So if anybody's interested in invest, in, you know, in donating to buy a child a radio, it doesn't just help that one child. It helps the family. It helps other kids in the community because they all sit around and listen to it. All right, I'm going to put a challenge out there for you, Jane. If people want to go to your um, Facebook page, facebook.com slash the fig tree children, they will find a link to your um, page with all of the op options for people to be able to donate. This is what it looks like. And the second one down there is radios for continued learning. 
and I'm challenged by the fact that coming from a bit of a radio background, radio is close to my heart as well. So I'm going to go on there straight after this, and I'm going to donate three radios to the, the cause. And oh, I want you. anybody that's mm -hmm. watching The Morning Kick to pick me up on that. Let's get on. You think about it, just for just over $100, you can donate three radios that are going to help a family in Sierra Leone. You're not connecting the NBN or their broadband. You're actually helping them with something that connects them. And if the government is providing this education over the air, this is the least that we can do. So let's do mm -hmm. something practical. Uh, maybe I, you're connected with the idea of the sanitary pads or something. Do something that you connect with to make a difference. Sorry, Jane. Mm. Yeah, sorry, sorry, to, I was interrupting there. I just wanted to add with regards to the radios. I actually had a conversation with Father Peter last night, and he's telling me he's able to source them for cheaper than what Aminata was telling me that they are because she went to a local shop and he's actually found another. So they need to communicate and we need to find out. So we may be able to buy them cheaper than this anyway, and which will be great because we can reach out to more children. I don't want to just be buying for the Fig Tree Kids. I want to reach out to the community. So if we can get as many radios as we can, we'll do that. That's brilliant. All right, let's do something practical. Jane, thanks very much for coming on The Morning Kick and giving us your time, telling us about what's been happening. Do go and visit thefigtreechildren.org and like the Facebook and Instagram pages. And I hope that we can come back at some time in the future and get an update from you, Jane. Wow, thank you. thanks, Andrew. I, I wanted to add you know, what, what Excite Media means to us as well. Oh, have I, have I got time to add a yep, little bit about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Excite Media, they sponsor three of our children. So Excite Media sponsors Gadaru in Newton and Emanuela in Allentown. And Scott also sponsors Lawrence in Allentown. Um, this means that Gadaru, Emanuela and Lawrence can all go to school and they can have you know, we pay their exams, we, we, um, and they're in the program. So they get every, they go to the, we, we also organize for them to have days at the beach, days at the play park. So they get to socialize with other fig tree kids. That's so important. You know, this, 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 uh, interaction, social, social, uh, behavior. Um, we, so, so there's all of those, there's all of that, they're part of the program, but it's also extremely valuable having, and a company like Excite Media behind us, because it gives us kudos, you know, and potential donors and sponsors uh, have confidence in what we're doing. And through Excite Media, I also met a lady called Megan Winter when I used to work at Excite and, um, with, with Nathaniel. Um, and Megan runs an e-commerce business called Unstoppable E-Commerce. And uh, they run Facebook ads and e-commerce online programs, and they're awesome. And I know I want to work with them when I, I'm looking to set up a social enterprise to try and make Fig Tree more sustainable in the future. And having an organization like Megan, Megan sponsors six of our children. So another that's company, amazing. that's another business that's doing amazing things. And through Excite, I also um came across bni which is a networking um program so and through bni i met a lady called isabel Teralba, and it was through bni i also met niall urquhart from urban urban landscaping that's got behind isabel sponsors eight of our children <laughs> you know so we there's some amazing people out there and some amazing that's a small great multiplying effect. yeah and niall and and it was because of excite that i met these people Okay, so so Niall and um, Isabel are both on our board now, and they're you know that they help and support campaigns. So say Niall's running an event, um, yeah, and then we've also applied for support from organisations like QUT, UQ, Strategic Grants, Zonta International have already donated towards the um, towards skill training for girls, sewing skills for girls. Um, and that comes in with the sanitary pad project as well with making reusable sanitary pads and yeah so there's a lot going on it's busy um so yeah support um you know with uh, uh, upcoming events and uh, our campaigns is massive will be will have a huge impact 
Well, I hope you've been challenged today and got some inspiration at the same time. And even if it's maybe not your business, but one of the things Excite Media does is asks our staff to be involved as well. So just taking a small amount out of their pay, every um, paycheck in, in order to be able to contribute to what the Fig Tree children are doing. Get creative, come up with something. And as you've just heard, it's even the referrals and telling people about this that is helpful to people like Jane and, and the organisations that they run. So it's been great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Jane. Look forward to getting another update in the future. Go to the Fig Tree Children. Right. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, guys, we're going to be back next Tuesday with the morning kick. Make sure that you share the videos. Subscribe at the moment. We'd love you to go to YouTube, to the Excite Media channel. Links are, of course, all over the place on our Facebook page, etc. And we'd love you to subscribe so that you know about the next episode coming up of the morning kick. In the meantime, stay safe, have a great weekend, relax, you get to travel a little bit more, visit the cafes, support local business, and we'll see you again soon.